Good day, everybody. Welcome to our lockdown webcast series, Digital Strategy in the COVID World. We believe that this crisis will pass, uh, but the way businesses communicate, collaborate, and digital products deliver products and services will change forever, and it will change towards digital and online channels. The agenda will cover my first shock, which was 9-11, very briefly, um, the world today, and how little we know um, factually about what's happening. Um, the reset, the digital strategy fam framework. Are you in a clear and present danger? <clears throat> which is an important question to ask, and the question today may be different than it was in January and February. We'll go deep into change number one, which is adopting consumer, uh, adopt, adopting digital customer experiences. Um, and change number two, we'll go into employee engagement platforms. I can, I'll share with you some uh, exam, examples of digital transformation, of digital programs, and then we'll close and go into, into the Q&A. Certain companies and industries that were in trouble, they were marginalized. There were shopping malls and shopping centers that didn't have that, that poor uh, occupancy or poor um, um, uh, visitation rates. Um, there are retailers that were not doing so well. There's um, companies that are being disrupted by digital. Uh, there's all sorts of different things happening. Um, in South Africa, Edcon, uh, Edgar's group, um, uh, went into uh, business rescue this week. They were marginalized before, now they're in serious trouble. South African Airways, the, the flagship carrier for South Africa, um, has been bailed out a number of times for government. Maybe they won't be bailed out this time. That's, that's the word on the street. Why? Because how do you have social distancing between in, in an aircraft, um, uh, uh, which is obviously is compact by, by, by definition. Um, we know that custom consumers and, and those of us in business are moving to digital channels fast. Um, but we also know, and we also know that online traffic is up substantially. So F Facebook reports that um, uh, um, chat is uh, up 500% as is video, video, um, video conversations on their platform. We can kind of assume that, it, that that plays itself out over Google and Zoom and all the, other, all the other channels that we use for video and chat communications. We also know that um, online social media advertising rates are falling fast. Why? Because marketing budgets um, are, are shrinking because of the shock and, and decrease in demand and the availability of certain products and services. Um, and also demand is dragging enough for, for lots of different things, but not everything. You know, we're still, we're probably spending more money at grocery stores and less money on eating out and other things. E-commerce, as you know, is booming. Um, as a, a friend of mine in Chicago, uh, she was chatting or chatting up the UPS uh, delivery guy. He says every day is Christmas. <clears throat> and it's true of UPS, um, uh, uh, DHL, FedEx, and all the other delivery engines in the States. It hasn't happened in South Africa yet because we're still in lockdown. E-commerce is by and large prohibited, except for the grocery stores. Uh, but in the States and in, in Europe, um, e-commerce and, and home delivery is, is booming very, very fast. And we'll talk about the ShopRite example just now. The reset, those of us on this call, uh, um, and those of us in uh, those folks in, in my circle of friends and family and business, uh, we think of, of this as a reset and things are going to be completely different. But I promise you, the majority of people out there um, aren't thinking like that. My people don't like change and change is coming very fast. Um, and it's causing great discomfort and, and human beings don't like change. Um, so we have, we have that to, to contend with. Um, but also big change creates opportunity. Uh, there is lots of proverbs out of China about big, you know, big crisis and big change means big opportunity. Uh, we'll set that aside for a moment, uh, but we do know that great uh, leaders will use this opportunity to reset. This here is our digital strategy framework. It was designed for management teams without deep digital skills and also for emerging markets. <clears throat> and you see, as we unpack this model, how can apply to you in, in language that, that, that you and your colleagues can, can, can really relate to on an on a intuitive level. Um, at the top of the, of the um, model is modest degrees of change. Uh, the, so these, this, the top part of the hexagon um, uh, relates to um, um, moderate change. And then the area below is just extreme degrees of change. So companies that are in a 
organizations that are in a um, clear and present danger should be operating at this, at this part of the hexagon. On the top left, we have deconstructing demand, iTunes and unbundling of music services is a good example of deconstructing demand, new market making, um, uh, Uber is a good example of this. We're able to instantly match suppliers and, um, and, and, uh, um, and, 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 and uh, consumers. On the right, we have unleashing supply. And a good example of that is YouTube, um, where we're unleashing supply of uh, the entire supply chain of, of providing entertainment content and learning content. Um, on the bottom right, we have digital technologies. Um, Amazon uses the entire digital technology stack to deliver a really fantastic e-commerce engine. In the middle, we have digital communities. Um, and we'll talk a lot about how it's not just about hyperscale platforms like, like uh, Facebook and, and Google have used um, um, their platforms to create media properties that are very powerful. Those of us, even with small businesses, can create digital communities around um, around our businesses or our industry. And last but not least, uh, new value propositions. Um, uh, this is where a great example is, is, is Checkers 6060 offering one hour home delivery of groceries to your doorstep. Going back to the top left, um, deconstructing demand. This involves perfect matching of, of product and market needs. Um, great examples are newspapers and music. So in the old days, we, we would buy a newspaper, you still can. Um, on Sundays, we would have a front page and a world page and a business section and a, um, and a sports section and Sudoku crossword puzzles. And going back 10 or 20 years, it made sense for the publishers of these, pub of these newspapers to send out everything, the whole lot, um, to us, even though we wouldn't, we wouldn't consume more than 10 or 20 or 30 percent of the content. And that's okay. That was okay because the production methods of the time made that okay. Uh, music is another example. And we're talking about unbundling iTunes. So going back two generations of music uh, uh, distribution, we would buy uh, a CD, a Bruce Springsteen CD for $12. When, when, when uh, iTunes uh, came about, you could download your Bruce Springsteen favorite song for $1. What happens then is you have new demand of people that want to spend $1 rather than 12 and people that can download on, onto their devices. Uh, lastly, but not least, uh, uh, the now and the easy. Spotify is a great example of this, um, where I can go on my iPhone, I can go into the app, I can download the app, I can put in my credit card details, and they'll charge me whatever it is, 60 Rand or 100 Rand or $10 a month, and I have access instantly to, to, um, to, to 3 million songs or more. New market making and again this is the uh, the uber example none of us would be using um taxis for anything other than going to and from the airport if it weren't for uber it's the added convenience and the instant matching of, of uh, suppliers and consumers um and bundled with the technology to execute a really fantastic customer experience uh, this involves a uh, financial technology so they can uh, uber can charge the, cons the customer and pay a share of that to the to the uh, to the driver keep some from for themselves and handle all the fraud controls um, they provide obviously gps for location-based services without which uber would never work um, uh, certainly not at the scale it is um, and they have rating systems to improve the customer experience for the drivers and for the for the customers unleashing supply um, YouTube creates a supply of minor celebrity scriptwriters. As I said before, the entire value chain of entertainment or content creation um, has been has exploded due to demand of, of so much so much programming available to much smaller audiences. Another example of um, of unleashing supply is Airbnb. Now, Airbnbs I can rent out my cottage or a spare room um, when there's demand for that. Um, so, in the Western Cape, in uh, in summertime. It used to be very difficult to get a, get a place to stay. With the advent of Airbnb, I can go online, I can find any number of places to stay in a specific locations um, um, I'm, I'm interested in at the different price points from a small room in an apartment to an entire house. Um, another example is um, Salesforce.com. They have the Dreamforce 
uh, conference. The last one was actually in, in San Francisco, was scheduled for last year, for last November, uh, because of the accommodation problems that they had. So when 180,000 people register for the conference, you have a city, San Francisco, which is only 800,000 people in the whole region, it's about 3 million people, you run into accommodation problems. Um, so yeah, some people would come and stay with family and friends, but um, more often people would, would, um, would uh, um, find an Airbnb uh, somewhere near San Francisco to give them, uh, to fulfill that, uh, that, <clears throat> uh, that uh, uh, excess demand in the market. Going back to the bottom right, digital technologies, uh, reducing the supply side cost structure by automating, by virtualizing, and by providing um, accurate and pre predictive data analytics. So we do think about Amazon as creating this uh, really world-class, uh, fantastic customer experience for, for e-commerce, um, but they also do other things. And I'll, I'll name two of them now. One is if I'm a supplier of arts and crafts, I can, sell my products through Amazon and either keep a small inventory with Amazon or deliver direct. And now Amazon handles the storefront and they handle the financial transaction. And again, they pay, uh, they pay the, the, the craft supplier their fair share and they have all the customer service. Uh, my second example, um, you can, if you're self-publishing, you can use um, Amazon as, as, as your publishing house. So a friend of mine a couple of years ago wrote a book. Um, she's a life coach. Uh, she spent $2.50 per copy of her book to have it published. So what she would do is if she was like, okay, cool, I'll buy the first 100 copies, send over $250, get 100 copies. Every time she goes to a customer or does a, does a workshop, she brings copies of the books and hands them out. Um, people can also buy her book on Amazon.com, say it's $10 or $8. Amazon takes their $2.50 and the rest will go to the publisher. It's a very, very, very um, efficient system that brings a whole lot of value um, using digital technologies. Digital communities. Um, we, again, we think of Facebook and Google and hyperscale platforms being the only way that we can build a digital community and a media property. Um, but we argue that uh, digital communities can go down to the company or the industry level. Um, one example is um, we can build an ecosystem for employees and subcontractors and employees of our, uh, of our tenants um, that provide um, training, um, occupational health and safety training, uh, communication and engagement. Um, if we're a tourism agency in a certain part of South Africa or the United States or Europe, we can create an entire ecosystem of, um, um, of, of SMEs, um, suppliers to the hospitality industry, um, restaurants, um, hotels, bed and breakfast, um, uh, cafes, um, drivers and the like. And we can connect them with tourists that are coming to stay in the area. And we can connect them also to their suppliers of, of say food and drink um, uh, ingredients. Um, another thing we can do with the tourism uh, uh, ecosystem platform is connect job seekers with hiring companies and maybe even using the tourism officials as accreditation of, of certain skills. I can cook, I can clean, I can make coffee, um, I can wait tables, I can drive. These are the different things I can do and they can become, uh, it creates value in terms of the tourism agency being, uh, being a facilitator of, of, of employment generation. My, by far my favorite of the entire hexagon is new value proposition, because this is where creativity really comes in. How do you, how do you really re, repackage your, your service or deliver it in a different way that's appealing to your customers? In this day and age, in this COVID era, it's becoming more and more important to be able to connect with people uh, and create a digital experience that's really, that's really um, they're really compelling. Um, um, so, you know, we enrich product with information. Nike had the first health app, the health fitness app. Um, um, John Deere and Caterpillar have enriched their products with information that's provided back to the, back to the, um, back to the customer. We can make a product social, lots of examples to that. We can make products as a service. You can own an Audi in the United States and in Europe without actually buying an Audi. You just have an available certain Audi model, make and model, 
available wherever you happen to be. Um, and of course, there's the um, there's the mother mother load of, of home delivery and a successful e-commerce platform. Now, in South Africa, um, you have uh, Woolworths and you have Pick and Pay and you have Shoprite and Checkers. Woolworths and, and Pick and Pay have not built their e-commerce engines with um, with scale and with automation in mind. And Checkers has. Checkers launched their 66s service last year. Um, as far as I know, they're still at about nine stores. Two are around here in Santon. Uh, the other seven are in the Western Cape. Um, and yes, they are struggling, struggling a little bit with uh, capacity now because there's been a massive increase in demand for the service. So yesterday I went on to the uh, Checker 6060 app at, uh, at two in the afternoon and they said we're closed for the day, we're already filled up. And the reason isn't because the platform doesn't work. The platform is built to scale. They just need 200 more uh, scooters and delivery um, delivery folks handing in the, blue, the Bluebird, which is my local store, checkers to be able to actually wrap up their delivery. The systems are actually built to scale and they're built to automate. So the question becomes, prior to this crisis, were you in a clear and present danger? Now we're in the crisis, are you in a clear and present danger? We found that uh, prior to the crisis, it was about 50-50. You know, if you're a mining company or a um, um, hard good manufacturer or you're a construction company, you can very easily op operate in the top half when you, when you think about digitally transforming your business. Um, but more and more, we're in the bottom half in this crisis, looking at um, uh, uh, yeah, extreme levels of change uh, to, to solve massive problems in the market. Um, we're going to unpack two specific opportunities within the digital transformation framework. Um, one is adopting uh, digital customer experiences. Um, we've seen over the last 20 years a, a steady migration from bricks and mortar to e-commerce. It's been faster in the U.S., it's been slower in Europe and South Africa, but now it's been being accelerated. And as we come out of lockdown, um, we're going to see a lot more vehicles out on the road bringing us uh, groceries and and food and drinks and, and, and hot meals and, and uh, household goods and cleaning products, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, a friend of mine is a documentary filmmaker, and I think it was about two or three days into this lockdown, she went on the Woolworths website, she ordered a basket of goods, the next day they brought it to her, and she says, this is fantastic. Um, I have, I'm never going into a store again. And it's that kind of enforced behavior, or forced upon behavior that consumers are really responding to um, as they just, just like to work from home and video conferencing within the workplace. How do you compete against digital first competitors and building digital uh, customer relationships and trust? That is a very, very difficult challenge. I'm not gonna, um, right. I'm not gonna downplay it. Um, but I'll give you an example of how a digital first company is offering a great customer experience and then any company can actually emulate that, uh, those experiences. Um, we believe, being in the technology business forever, that the technology business is easy, but the automation and the scale is really, really hard. And that, that goes back to the checkers example versus bullies and pick and pay. Um, technology is easy, but change management and culture change is also hard. If you're accustomed to providing products and services through a retail store and suddenly you shift to a delivery mechanism online, um, it's, it's, it requires a lot of change within the organization. And people, as we said at the beginning, they're, they're, they're not, uh, people don't adapt to changes very, uh, very easily. Uh, creating and engaging customer experiences, we have covered that at length. Um, and last, we're getting out of like the consumer supplier um, in, um, uh, relationship and into um, cold hard data that can be used uh, to for decision optimization and commercialization. And I'll give you two examples. One is the, the free Wi-Fi in a cafe and um, and restaurants. So if I go to, I hate using this example of Starbucks, but if you go to Motherland, which actually offers very very good coffee. They can see when you come in because they see your MAC address and they don't know who you are personally, but they know your behavior and they know they can, especially if they can ha um, handle your transactions in app, which, um, uh, which Starbucks can, then they can offer you loyalty programs, they can offer you incentives, they can, they can take actions to bring you back or get you to buy, buy, buy more stuff. 
On a macro, that's a micro scale. On a macro scale, we're talking about large consumer environments. And again, with the free Wi-Fi, we can track without violating uh, privacy, um, uh, privacy laws and Corpy and GDPR. We can actually see the movement of, 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 of people through our, um, through our properties and then make decisions such as tenant rates, uh, rent rentals, rental rates, um, where to put certain promoters, where to put certain advertising mechanisms, um, like advertising boards and other things. We can be sitting in Cape Town or Joburg um, or London or Singapore or New York and see exactly what's going on in our property uh, in Santon. Um, and that's, that, that's a very powerful tool. And it's just provided by you know, offering free Wi-Fi. And there's other things by, um, that, there's other ways that other, other values can be had through free Wi-Fi. And that's another, an, another discussion for another webcast. Second change is internal to an organization. And we're talking about employee engagement. And we spoke a little bit about employee uh, engagement platforms. Um, uh, one is a uh, training, so we can provide video training on devices. Managers can see um, uh, that an employee started a video, finished a video, and moves on to a survey, which is like an exam to, to prove that they understood the video. We can provide occupational health and safety um, information or training using an app. We can create groups of communication of cleaners or security people or tenant employees or tenants themselves and create communications that's, that's within a group or is, or is broadcast on the app. Um, we can um, uh, record uh, uh, log problems, um, compliments and complaints. There's a spillage here, there's a light out there, whatever, there's a pothole here, if you're thinking about on a municipal level. Um, we can, we can issue uh, uh, surveys and, and ratings uh, for, for, uh, for, for performance. And if you want to get a little bit deeper and provide some more integration into your backend human resources systems, you can provide pay slips and lead management on the app. These are some ex examples of um, how we can use digital technologies to, to, to uh, transform our businesses. This is a webcast. Um, We've done two of these now. We get about 60 registrations. We got about 30, 30 or so on the call. Um, and it's basically, other than a lot of time, um, it's, it's basically a free service for the business. And we're okay with that 60 and 30 because we can repurpose this video and send out um, um, the video, uh, the podcast, the deck, uh, and repurpose that in many different ways. Um, if we wanted to go big, this example here is Adweek, which is a um, advertising, um, um, advertising, uh, it's an advertising industry publication, um, and we did in this particular one um, talking about basically customer experience back in the day. That attracted 9,000 registrations and 6,000 people on the call as we did as we did this webcast. Um, for 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 me, does it make sense to? Uh, to partner with Business Day and pay them a fee to get this uh, invitation out and publicized to their base and to co-host the program. Well, that depends. Um, but if I wanted to have two or 3,000 people on this call, then that's exactly what I would do. Um, online learning, there's been a big migration even prior to the COVID crisis, um, a, a steady migration from classroom learning to online learning. There's many different ways to do that. This is Naked Insurance. It's a digital first. We talked about digital first. Um, uh, like in this case, insurance companies, um, and how they uh, create such a fantastic customer experience that either the uh, incumbents will have to emulate them, copy them, um, or be in a, under some serious or competitive pressure. So with Naked Insurance, if we had if those of us that are insured by them um, um, uh, today, um, we could have pushed pause five weeks ago and save a lot of money on our, on our insurance. Um, they originally created that functionality for long trips to so go overseas for a month, you pause your insurance policy and pay a bare minimum uh, to handle liability and some basics. Um, they can provide your quote in 90 seconds, they can provide your policy in five minutes. Um, when you have a claim, you can do your whole claim through your phone and not be emailed forms that you have to print out and, and fill out and scan and, and send back. Um, and those kind of old school analog processes. Um, we covered digital content at length. Um, there's lots of lots of we can do. 
um, using devices. We spoke about engagement apps. Um, we haven't spoken about um, chatbots. Chatbots use AI um, as a conversation tool to automate some of the conversations uh, with, with contact centers prior to being um, either replacing um, human interaction or prior to um, a, a live agent being involved. And a lot of those chatbots happen um, um, on WhatsApp these days. Um, virtual and augmented reality. When I was living back in Silicon Valley, when I was in Sausalito near San Francisco in the 2014, 2015, 2016, there was a big conversation and hundreds of millions of dollars invested in virtual and augmented reality. It is becoming a reality now. Um, PwC issued a, um, a report last week or the week before I saw um, they're expecting the augmented reality business to be a trillion dollar business over the next 10 years and it's something we really need to be looking at, um, at now. Now when it comes to e-commerce in the United States, small consumer products uh, companies had the following breakdown and this is according to, to Kevin O'Leary who's one of the sharks in Shark Tank. 50% of sales through retail, 40% of the sales through Amazon, 10% are direct, direct to consumer. Um, obviously with the retail going away for a number of weeks, along with all the profits, um, these companies needed to adjust. So they launched these online campaigns, email campaigns to their customer base, whether it be 10,000 people or 100,000 people, expecting a decades long response rate, which would be two and a half percent. Much to their surprise, they received a 15 to 17% response rate on these campaigns. Now on the left side of the screen, we have Shopify, a well-known e-commerce platform uh, out of Canada, where you can set up your online store in a matter of, of minutes. Um, on the, on the, the, <clears throat> below them, there's a local South African company called Shopstar. Um, they offer the same kind of service, an e-commerce platform where people can buy and transact uh, um, <clears throat> uh, on, on their platform. On the right side, we have different kinds of uh, uh, pick, and, pick and ship. Uh, Instacart is now a $15 billion business in the United States um, where, where people will actually go and manually pick products out of the supermarket and deliver them to your door. Um, the local version of that, uh, there's two of them, one Zulzi and the other one is called One Cart. Um, these are ways that you can actually get online, deliver products and services literally in the same day. It's really not that hard. Now everybody's building an online store. How do you distinguish yourself um, in, in, that, in that platform? Um, this is a product called Photosphere where you can, within an iframe, you can display your products in a three-dimensional way where the uh, customer can actually look at the products in much more detail, even zooming in and seeing textures and colors in, in more detail. This is the same uh, example with, uh, with the pink Nikes where we can spin them around, look at them upside down, we can zoom in and see, um, see the texture of the laces and of the fabric. How can we help you? Um, first of all, first and foremost, uh, DIY, do it yourself. You can actually uh, download this presentation at, at the, uh, uh, the link below um, in the YouTube comments section. Um, and you can actually get your team together and you can unpack the model and find the two or three things that you can do today uh, to uh, better adapt to the, the digital world. Um, or you can call us in for a, for a workshop. We'll spend a half a day or a full day with you. I'll bring a technical expert and we can unpack the model within the context of your business and your strategy um, and come up with two or three ideas of what you can do uh, to digitize your, your business and get on your digital transformation journey. Um, we can also take those ideas and develop a business case. And often it comes down to a build or buy business case. Either we're gonna build these products and services to scratch, or we can adopt um, certain kinds of technologies, AI, robotics, uh, many different things that, things that we can do uh, to, to fast track your digital transformation efforts. Thank you very much for joining me for our lockdown webinar series, uh, Digital Strategy in the COVID World. Uh, just because it's raining doesn't mean you're a bad farmer. I think we just need to take a pause a little bit, um, look at our options, look at our, our businesses. Uh, we may not need an entire transformation of our business. Maybe we, we just need a nip and a tuck. Maybe we just need to set up an online door store or do something very simple with our, um, with our business as we come out of lockdown and into this new world. 
and my details are down below. Also, the presentation is available down below. Um, you can contact me at any time uh, with any questions you might have.